Hey guys, it's Kimberly, and today we're in the studio with Dana from the YouTube channel Made Every Day. Thanks for coming. Thank you, I am excited to be here. And today we have a really fun and simple project. I'm calling it the Single Scoop Zipper Pouch. And these are great, you can hold your keys, your makeup, candy, I don't know, whatever fun little thing you have. Yeah. So let's get started. Dana, show me what we're gonna be using today. Okay. I love making these bags because not only are they a quick sew, they take a little bit of fabric. And we're here at the Fat Quarter Shop. Guess what? All we need is a fat quarter for the outside and a fat quarter for the lining. And then a few other things. For the strap here, I'm going to be using some fabric that I've made into bias tape. We're going to be using some Aurifil decorative thread. We have an Atkinson 12 to 14 inch zipper. And then we're gonna be using some fusible interfacing or fleece. It doesn't really matter exactly what kind you have, but something that you can fuse in. Cause it just gives a little more structure to your bag, mm -hmm. which is nice. And then most importantly, you need some sort of pattern. And we have one available for you guys, a template pattern that you can download on the Fat Quarter Shop website. Yep, and it's free. Just go to the free pattern page at Fat Quarter Shop. So let's go to the next step. Okay, we're starting with our interfacing first. And if you've never used interfacing, don't, don't be scared, it's really simple. You can buy fusible or sew-in kind, and the kind that we're using is the fusible, which has like kind of little pieces of glue that fuses your fabric. And it's really just like sewing an extra layer of fabric to your fabric. It gives it a little more structure, or you can use it kind of like when you're making a quilt, right? You add right. batting, it's right. a similar concept, okay? So I have my template here, and what I wanna do is cut out two pieces of this interfacing for the outside of our bag. I'm just gonna use it on the outside because it's a little bit thick, and so I don't want my bag to be too thick. For too the thick. lining, we're just gonna use the fabric. Okay. So I am just kind of like, you know, a free spirit when it comes to cutting. I'm just gonna hold my hand on top and cut right out. You could use a rotary cutter if you're more comfortable with that or you could pin it in place, but. And I think that's the beauty of this project. It doesn't have to be perfect. Yes. Just go with it. Totally, I love just make it work moments and you know, stuff like that. And the fabric that we're using today, I should point out, is fabric I designed with Art Gallery Fabrics and it's called Boardwalk Delight. It's full of, you know, ice so cream cute. cones and sprinkles and Things that I love about summertime because I love summer. So, okay, now I have these two cut out. I'm gonna set that aside. And Kim, what I'm gonna have you do is you're gonna press it onto the fabric for me. So, you want to use, press it to the wrong side of your fabric. Right. Because it's gonna be on the back. And it's important to decide where you're gonna place it. Yeah, the direction. So, like, you want the words to go up. This is gonna be your top, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And decide. Do I want the word on this particular fabric? Do I want lemon, lemon to be to in be the, the middle or wild berry or whatever you want? So it's important to pay attention to the print of your fabric for that. Okay, so I'm gonna do this. Perfect, and you have the glue side down, so that's perfect. While you're doing that, I am going to cut out two pieces for the lining. And when you do this, do you steam or do you not steam? Um, I think either way is fine. And you always wanna read the instructions on the package that your interface right. came with, just so you know exactly what you're supposed to do. Every brand is slightly different. Okay, I am now cutting out the lining pieces too with our Oops. same template here. Oops, sorry about that. Yeah, this is a fun project. You know, I think people sometimes are scared to use zippers and they hear the word lining and they think that's intermediate. Yes, but yes. Honestly, I am telling you, my daughter who's 10 has 10 year old friends that they all sell these little zipper pouches. So this is even great for beginners. It's not hard to do. And it, if it challenges you, that's a good thing with sewing, right? Yeah, like, we're totally out of my element right now, yeah, oh, good. we're gonna have fun. <laughs> well, quilting is out of my element, so we're kind of, you know, helping each other out here. <laughs> okay, let's see, how's that going? Perfect, good. okay. Yes. And then when you're done with that, I'm gonna hand you the scissors, because now you're going to cut out the fabric with your interfacing attached. Okay. So there you go. And that's what makes it nice about cutting the interfacing first, is that it's, it's easier than holding your paper down and cutting around, because it's right there for you. Okay, and when we're done with that, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, one last thing we wanna do with our lining before we move to the next step is to press these edges under a little bit. And I know this sounds weird right now, but it's really going to help in a later step, especially because this is, because it's curved is pretty much why I'm doing this. I'm ironing it under about 3 eighths of an inch because that's the seam allowance we're going to use when we sew this. But, it, you know, it's not precise. I'm mostly just kind of pressing it under. And I'm mostly just doing the curved area because when you sew a zipper pouch, if you've ever made one before, you have to leave an opening in the lining. Otherwise, you'll never be able to turn the whole thing right side out. And then you sew that lining closed at the end, and that's what this is going to help with. So just like that. Okay, let's move on. 
Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about before we start sewing is the strap that you're gonna use for your bag. And you can use a variety of different things. And I love using different textures when I sew. So some fun options you could use is some vinyl like this. And you can buy these things online or in other fabric shops, things like that. And I've just folded it in half. The cool thing about vinyl or plastic or oil cloth is that they don't fray. Right. So I cut this probably about an inch wide, or actually, yes, probably about an inch. Yeah, Fold it in half, see so like a half inch strap. This one is really fun. It is clear vinyl, and that gives kind of a cool different element. Or like this right here, I used oil cloth. Again, you could use leather. Have fun with the different things that are out there. And so she just cut strips, put them wrong sides together, and just cut a little stitch on the edge, but mm -hmm. didn't have to fold under. So this is really quick and easy. Yeah, right. Now what we're gonna use today is, because it's also fun to use the same fabric from your collection, is that I'm using some bias tape that I already made. Bias tape is similar kind of to quilt binding. Right. I just cut some strips, and you can buy little um, contraptions to help you make the bias tape. But I cut about a one inch wide. Yeah, it's one inch. Actually, no, this is two inch wide, because we're doing double fold. Okay. A two inch wide strip, and then it folds in half, and then it folds in half again, and it makes a little binding. And she used bias strips, but you could also use straight strips. Straight right. Straight strips. With the fabric yep. strips. You can do either. So you've got lots of options. Uh -huh. I love that the, all the bags don't have to be the same and you can have fun with it. Exactly. And you can buy it pre-packaged in stores yes. or you can make your own. Yes. And then let's cut our strips right now, okay. our handle. What you want to do, again, there's no particular length. It just depends on, it's like a little wristlet. So if you're going to be the one holding the bag, measure around your wrist and then give yourself, I don't know, an extra couple inches on each side like that. So why don't you cut that off for me? And there you go. You're ready to go. Let's actually start sewing. So we're gonna start by quilting the outside of the bag, the one that we put the inner facing on. So give me some tips on how you quilt. Okay, oh man, I feel like you should be giving me some tips. <laughs> I like to keep it really simple because I'm not as experienced in quilting. I love to do simple stripes, diagonal stripes, just something like that. And this is just gonna help keep the inner facing held together better with your fabric, and it just looks kind of cool. And so what stitch length are you gonna use? Just like kind of somewhere in the middle, maybe like a three, or okay. sometimes even do a four if I just want it to like, like get through really, it quickly. Yeah, like yeah. a really large, fun, bright stitch. Exactly, and yeah. if you are a quilter and have some really cool fancy, do whatever you want. It's all up to you, it's your adventure. Okay, I'm gonna do my quilting on a diagonal here, and my type of sewing is that I just kind of like to wing it. So I'm starting on the corner here, and you always wanna do a little back stitch at the beginning. That's gonna kind of tie your threads off. And then I'm just kind of eyeballing it and going down to the other corner. You can buy cool little, um, I don't know, what are they called? Little gauges that you can, seam allowance gauges, so you know how far over you're gonna go for the next one. But as I said, I'm gonna wing that as well. I'm kind of just lining this up over here. And I don't know, I'm going over about an inch or so. Do my back stitch. And I'm just trying to sew in as straight a line as I can. Depending on the print of the fabric that you're using, it will make it easier with how you do your quilting. Like, if the print has a repeating pattern, it might be easier to gauge where your lines go. So this is kind of a random spaced pattern. So just do whatever you want. Okay, I have our two outer pieces that we have quilted on top. I have the two lining pieces, and now we're gonna sew this all together in like a little sandwich. So, start with your first outer piece and take your zipper, and we're using a nylon zipper here. And the nice thing about that is that this is a 14 inch zipper, which as you can tell, is a lot longer than our pouch. And the great thing about that is that at the end, we can just cut off this excess. You can use these for a variety of projects depending on how large your thing is. If you were using a metal zipper, which I also like to use sometimes, you would need a metal zipper to be the exact length because you cannot cut through the metal with your scissors. So, okay, start with the right side facing up and the right side of your zipper facing down so that the two right sides of these pieces are together. And I'm placing the end of the zipper flush with the edge of my little pouch here and line everything up at the top here. That's really important. This is where you really need to be precise. I know I'm kind of like loosey goosey with everything else, but this is an important part. Then take your lining fabric and place that with the right side facing down. So you're making your sandwich here. And then I love to hold it together with these little wonder clips. They are wonderful. And they just make the whole process really easy instead of using pins. Just use a few of those, and clip it all together. And then we're just going to sew right down here with our little seam. And an important thing is we're going to use a zipper foot for your sewing machine. So let me show you how that works. Here's what a zipper foot looks like. And it's just another presser foot that goes on your machine. It comes with most machines or you can buy one. It's not a big deal. Don't feel intimidated by it. All you do is you take off the one that comes on your machine. And I put this one 
right on. It just clicks on like that. And you can see that mine can be positioned on either the left side or the right side. And that just gives you more room with where you're sewing your zipper. So I'm having mine on the left side here. Now the reason a zipper foot is great is that if I come over here, it allows your presser foot to get really close to your zipper without the presser foot getting in the way of your zipper. And if you want to learn more about zippers, I've got a YouTube video on my channel. You can check that out. So what we're going to do is we need to start a little bit past the zipper pull right here. And the reason we want to do that is that you can see here, I can't really get super close to it. So this is a little tricky, but you're going to be like, oh, I get it. We're going to start a little bit past there press our foot down and then you can decide what seam allowance you want I'm gonna use the edge of my presser foot here to kind of guide me as I'm going down the whole way and I'm using about a two and a half inch stitch length I'm gonna start here do a little back stitch and then sew right down remove your wonder clips as you go of course and sewing with zippers is so fun. It really makes your projects feel just a little more professional and cool looking. It will definitely impress all your friends. Okay, do a back stitch at the end. Okay, now if I open this up, you can see this is the part that we did not sew at the top. So you just wanna unzip that down a little ways so that now the pull of the zipper, which is the little thing at the top, is not in the way. Close that back up, go back to the top and re-sew that part in place. And just stop when you get back to the stitching that you were at before. And then when we do the other side, we'll do it the opposite way. So let's get our other pieces. Okay, so here's the first part of our sandwich done. You can see the zipper. It's kind of fun to just open it and be like, wow, it works, right? <laughs> okay, so put that over here. Now grab the other part of your sandwich. So here's the outer part of our bag. Now we're gonna take our zipper you want to open it up so you can see the right side of the zipper. Now this is going to be going the opposite direction now. So place those with right sides together and again line up this edge part right here. Making the other part of our sandwich pull this so it's all kind of flat. Then take our other lining piece and sandwich that on top, lining everything up again. Use your wonder clips and clip it all together. And then, there we go, let's go back to our sewing machine. Okay, we're doing the exact same thing here, except that the pull of our zipper is now at the bottom. So at the top here, we're just gonna start right at the top using the same seam allowance that you did. That's important because you want it to look the same on both sides. Okay, go down right there, do a little back stitch, and sew right down. There we go. And then as I'm getting close to the pull here, I'm just gonna stop maybe right about there. Come off and then open the zipper up a little bit. And go back to our machine. And there are a variety of different ways to sew zippers and you might know a different method, but this is a way that I have used that I feel like is pretty easy and works every time. Back stitch, cut your thread off and let's go see how our zipper looks. Okay, here's how our zipper looks. Moment of truth, Kim. Open it up, see if it works. <laughs> yeah, it's so cute. And like her lines, her stitch lines are like oh. almost exact. So that's like amazing. That was purely accidental. I'm not that good, but <laughs> thank you for noticing. Okay, so this is always an exciting part when you see that my zipper worked and this is awesome. I can now sew zippers, yay. Okay, now one more thing you would want to do, which we're gonna do in a second, is to sew a little decorative top stitch on top. It's decorative, but it also really holds all those yep. layers together. Yep, it holds the like the middle to the back and everything, mm -hmm. and that's actually my favorite part of doing a zipper is the top stitch. Oh good, okay. So let's go back to our, sh our machine and do that, and then we'll sew the whole bag together. I'm back at my machine here, and I still have my zipper foot on, which helps because you can get a little closer to where you need to. And just come right down here. Like I said, we're doing a decorative top stitch. And I'm using about a three to four inch stitch length, kind of like I did on the outside of the bag when we were quilting it. And as I get down, that pull is not in the way, so I can go all the way down. And as you can see, I've been sewing through all the layers at once. So the lining is sewn together, and this is just gonna help everything just stay together nicely. And it looks really professional. I feel like the things that you can do to make your projects look professional is kind of awesome. Okay, now we're gonna put our bag all together and sew the outside. 
Okay, we're ready to clip our whole bag together. And this is probably the most important thing in this whole project. At this moment, you need to open your zipper. Otherwise, when you sew everything together, it would be all sealed shut. And then that's so deflating. So make sure you open your zipper. And I like to actually open mine about, I don't know, two thirds, three fourths of the way. It's not specific, but. Then you wanna take your fabrics, put the two outer sides together and the two lining sides together like this. And then first what we wanna do is to insert our little strap that we have here. Now, since I was using the bias tape, I actually sewed it together along here so that it's not opening up on me and it becomes a little handle. And like we showed earlier, I already cut it to the proper length for my wrist. What we're gonna do is with it folded in half like this, we wanna insert it right here where the front opening of the, of the zipper is. So I'm gonna take it and if you remember how it looks, on the outside it looks like this, which means when you sew it in, you wanna flip it the opposite way. We're gonna sew it into the seam right here and you can see once that's sewn, it will actually stick out like that. So just place it, I don't know, about a half of an inch down from there and put these up. And then we're gonna take one of these wonder clips and pin that all in place, clip it in place, I mean. And then I like to clip the other side as well. And it can be confusing which direction your zipper is going to go. You want, like I did over here, the little teeth to be facing toward the lining, which is going to feel natural because we did that top stitch and it kind of is forcing the zipper to go in that direction. So clip that in place. And then we're gonna clip around the whole bag. Now the other important thing in this project is that you need to leave an opening here so that we can turn the whole thing right side out. I like to just put my hand there and that's about how big I need to leave the opening so I can get my hand in there to pull the fabric out. So I clip right there and I'm gonna clip over here. If you have a hard time remembering that you're leaving an opening, you could use, sometimes I use like red pins or something that's gonna remember, but you'll get it. You'll sew it once and you'll remember. Okay, let's clip around this side. And now we're ready to sew. We're gonna sew starting here. So all the way around and stop here. And you can see, remember in that first step, we press these under. This is one that's gonna be really helpful. Okay, let's go to our machine. Okay, I have my standard presser foot back on my machine. And I'm gonna come over here and start at my start point. And you can see I'm kind of sewing right on the crease that we pressed earlier. And then, like I said, do a little back stitch. And it's important to be consistent with your seam allowance all the way around the bag so that the lining fits perfectly inside of the outer part. When you get to the zipper, just go kind of slow to make sure you get through all of those pieces like that. Okay, and then just keep going around. When you sew around curves, I like to just use both of my hands and kind of just pull it around so that you get a nice, smooth curve. When you're sewing with woven, woven fabrics, it's easy to do that. With knits, you don't want to do that because it stretches, but this works great. Okay, keep going around. Getting back, now this is where my handle is. There's a lot of layers here, so I'm just kind of going slowly. And you know, you can always turn your machine manually on the side with the knob if it gets too thick. And also make sure at this part that you are not sewing through any of the zipper pieces. Well, if you're using a metal zipper. With these plastic nylon zippers, it should be okay. But you wanna make sure that your zipper is proper. Okay, keep going around to our stop point. That's good right there, I'm gonna stop. Okay, let's check it out and see how it looks. Okay, now let's turn the whole thing right side out and this is always the super exciting moment. You wanna make sure, don't cut this off yet. Let's just check everything out first. Make sure we look good before we remove anything. Okay, and then just poke this out with your fingers. You could use one of these little point turner things. Whatever works, a chopstick, a pencil. I like using whatever's around. Okay, make sure you get all those pieces out. And look, you can see our little handle. That looks awesome. Make sure the lining got sewn properly and then stick that inside. Okay, oh my goodness, it's pretty much, you know, Done, looking awesome. But we need to finish off that little lining piece inside. So now that we know that everything looks good, let's go back and trim off this zipper part. Because we don't need to have that hanging out inside. Just cut it right there. And you could do the same thing on the other side. I think that our handle, there it is, was just sticking out a little bit. You can trim that as well. Okay, put those aside. And then go back and turn everything the proper way. There's a lot of turning involved in this step, as you can see. Okay, now 
with this lining. If this was a rectangle, it'd be really easy to just turn this under and sew it closed. But this is the reason why we pressed it earlier, is that on the curve, it could be a little more difficult to do that. So we're gonna go back, have my little clips here. I'm gonna clip that opening closed. And if you wanna be really fancy, you could, whoop, you could hand sew this part closed. I am kind of a let's get it done kind of person, so I'm just gonna sew it with a sewing machine. So we're going back to our sewing machine here. And I'm sewing really close to the edge here, so probably like an eighth inch seam allowance. You wanna get close to the edge without going off the fabric, and that's just so that, you know, it looks a little nicer and inconspicuous. And definitely use a thread color that's going to kind of coordinate with your fabric. Just sew to the end there, back stitch, cut off your threads, and just stick that sucker back inside, and we are done. Let's, let's go show Kim how it looks. Okay, Kim, we're done. We just made a cute little bag. It's so cute, and it makes me think I can actually do this. I can't can. wait. I'm gonna make some You can totally tonight. do it. And then the fun thing is you can mix it up so many different ways with all the different fabrics, with the Boardwalk Delight collection, or with other fabrics. And the reason I call this a single scoop pouch, zipper pouch, is because I kind of feel like it looks like a little bowl of ice cream with the spoon sticking out. So. Yeah. And you know, my fabric's about ice cream. But like I said, you can use different things for the handles. And this one, I kind of like to call like the mother load Sunday. It's just a big one. And if you're a quilter, it's fun. You could piece fabric together, have fun, do whatever you want. Lots of options. We have learned so much today and we're so excited that you came. And Thanks. we can't wait till next time. So definitely subscribe to our channel and tell them about your channel. Check out Made Every Day, the channel, or madeeveryday.com. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Yeah.